But on the alien side, we'll get into this conversation another day. I, I was thinking about it the other day because I was looking back at my uh, zombie apocalypse video I did when we discussed like the, the apocalypse and like questioning a lot of it. And there was a comment. No, I'm gonna bring this up. There was a comment on the video. We're gonna bring it up. Where's my, my channel? Um, someone left a comment. I've seen some things in Arizona that's definitely explained. Oh, with the alien stuff. Yeah. I want to look at like videos of alien stuff and just look at them. Also, you know, it's up to the YouTube. Go check it out. But someone left a comment. Hold on. Make sure this is paused. There we go. It, it's just one comment and it says because in any apocalypse other humans are always the most dangerous part of survival and i think she was responding to the fact that i mentioned in it that it doesn't make sense why they're constantly doing human stuff with the zombie apocalypse specifically the walking dead and the reason i want to respond to this is like in that video i'm not sitting here saying that like the the humans aren't the most dangerous part of the apocalypse theoretically yes they technically i'll say technically yes other humans are going to be some of the most dangerous things you come across unless whatever you're fighting is going to be a whole nother story right but that wasn't the point i was making okay in this entire video the entire one hour um video on youtube i simply was saying that the fact that in The Walking Dead, they're so inconsistent with their storytelling in the sense of like how the walkers are, how they evolve, how they evolve and how they de-evolve or not evolve. I should say change, mutate, whatever you want to call it. Like some know in the first season how to climb, how to use rocks and tools to get into places and open doors. And then after that, whenever there's wars with humans, like actual human beings, or issues with other humans, all of a sudden, all the zombies, stupid again. They don't know how to do shit. And they're super easy to fight, right? But then, once once the war is over and everything, all of a sudden, zombies are back to being smart. Like, in the recent, like, Fear the Walking Dead, they had the zombie who knocked the gun out of the guy's hand. You had uh, zombies hiding themselves and attacking when they weren't paying attention. All these things, right? And that's what I was simply stating in that video is what doesn't make sense is how all of a sudden, yeah, get your popcorn chat. What doesn't make sense to me is how when you sit there, right? And you're thinking about writing about an apocalypse. Smalls, thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate you. Um, thank you, I really appreciate you. Um, when, when you sit there, right? And you're creating an apocalypse, a zombie apocalypse, right? If you're inconsistent with the way your zombies are, to me, I feel like that's just bad writing. That's bad writing. And there's no way that could have been a mistake. No freaking way. Because if it's just like the actors doing this, like the, the zombie actors, whatever, doing this and the directors aren't paying attention, like, no, the directors are leaving these things in, which is what doesn't make sense to me. It's like, can you stay consistent with it or at least show like developing changes with the zombies, you know? I don't know, in my opinion, I feel like The Walking Dead specifically, and a lot of other, like... Do you not like when the enemies evolve? What do you mean? Genuine question. Like, the zombies, or what? Well, no, so what we're talking about is... Or do you mean the, the humans? Because we're talking about The Walking Dead. And in The Walking Dead, they're very inconsistent with it. So, like, season one, they have zombies using rocks to, like, bash in the windows and crawl, they're walk, crawling up fences and whatnot, right? They're smart. They they're genuinely seem smarter. And then after that, they all of a sudden become super freaking stupid. Like, as the show progresses, the zombies evolve to become stronger. That's what I want. But The Walking Dead doesn't do that. They backtrack and then go forward with it. Like, so after... I think after maybe season two, right? Darwin didn't exist in the Walking Dead timeline, true. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Um, no, see, that's what I want. That's what I'm trying to like say here. 
is the walking dead doesn't do that they they go back and forth with it because then in when they get to like the prison and um the, those parts of the season where they are introduced to the governor and all these things, right? All of a sudden, the zombies seem really stupid. Like, all of a sudden, it's like you backtrack and they don't know how to open doors, they don't know how to crawl fences or use the tools like they were before, nothing, okay? And then all of a sudden, in seasons, um, I think it was one of the seasons, later seasons like 10 or 11 for the walking dead you had a zombie picking up a knife you had a zombie picking up a rock and climbing a ladder right you had zombies like that were actually seeming like they were getting smarter right but the zombies from and then in fear the walking dead which is also supposed to be um i don't know what time they're in but the seasons we were looking at when the gun was knocked out of their hand and um, you had one of the zombies hiding and like basically hunting, like those are more middle, I think, of the Walking Dead seasons. Um, you had those happen. You had, oh, and then in later seasons of the Walking Dead, you had one, a couple walkers learning how to use like their weight and their force um, against people to attack. And it's like, all of a sudden they're getting all smart. But they weren't like this before. Like, very beginning, yes. And then nothing. And then this. Um, this sounds like they're just using that as a crutch. The zombies are capable of whatever the plot requires. And this is what doesn't make sense to me. And that's, like, this I had to bring up this quote, or her, um, this girl's comment on my video. Because it's like, okay, I was not talking. Like, yeah, humans in zombie apocalypses can be some of the most dangerous enemies you're going to face, right? especially because they can think and all these things. But when it comes to the the zombies itself, you're focusing on the walking dead, the zombie apocalypse. You should not be using the same fucking plot every single time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So anyways, um, are you familiar? La, 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 la. Where was I? Uh, hold on, let me catch it. Best zombies infected from the Last of Us games. I think so. I can kind of agree with that, yeah. Hi, alien. Hello. How are you? Um, best movie zombie was World War Z. I can agree with that one, too. Both of those zombies were really good. Are you familiar with the term willing suspension of disbelief? I don't think so. Explain it to me. How are you? We're doing good. How are you, alien? How are you feeling? Um, and I, it just, I don't know. For me, it's lazy writing when you do that. Meanwhile, Telltale's Walking Dead keeps the zombies consistent through keeping them mindless monsters that will gang up on any human that they can find. Exactly! Like, why couldn't they just be based off, like, be the same? Because that's true! You're totally- I kind of forgot about The Walking Dead, The Telltale's Walking Dead. You're right. With The Telltale's The Walking Dead, you have actual- actual zombies that are consistent through the whole fucking thing consistent and it comes down to at the end of the day with the way that they did it in there they came down to basically like how dumb the people themselves are and how they can feel rushed or panicked and that causes them to have rushed reactions and that's what causes the issues or causes them to get bit and all these things right is how they react to things. I think they did it really well with how they did it because they still had people fighting against people, right? They still had the um, that that threat of people of you know like you don't know what they're capable of, while actually focusing still on the actual Walking Dead itself of surviving the zombie apocalypse. It didn't feel like it was constantly human against human. It felt like it was actually human versus the world. Human and survival kind of a thing, you know? Uh, meanwhile, yeah, yeah, so, also, hi, Tudor. Uh, it's good to see you. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, the idea is that the viewer will deliberately ignore things that would be unbelievable IRL for the purpose of enjoying the story. <sighs> yeah, but, like, how far can you go with that, you know? How far the viewer is able to look past something in a game slash movie that doesn't make sense. But again, how far are you willing to, to go, right? So in this case, it's I don't care how consistent the zombies are. I want my story drama. But see, I to go to such drastic changes just doesn't make sense. 
and yeah it's up to the viewer and everyone's gonna be different and notice different things but i feel like a lot of what tale or not telltale the walking dead did the creators did was just after i want to say season seven they just started using shit for shock factors i feel like that's what they did with the zombies right because if they can kept it consistent like telltale did i think you would be on a like a lot better of a like i don't know i feel like more people would have actually wanted to keep up with the walking dead and a lot of people did but a lot of people stopped watching after glenn spoiler alert after glenn fucking got his brain smashed out okay a lot of people stopped watching after that and again i feel like there could have been there's so many things that just weren't explained there were so many things that like people didn't discuss like there were so many plot holes and so many just things that didn't make sense and that's why like that was my biggest problem with the walking dead but again if they had done it like telltale did where you kept that instead of just constant human versus human aspect and you made it human versus survival that would have been a whole different fucking ball game right like think about think about how different it would have been if you focused on the actual survival aspect you can encompass everything in there you encompass the struggle of finding actual good supplies you you focus on the the human contacts you focus on the zombies you focus on nature fucking self and you can have so many more like shock factors suspense all these things without worrying about the stupid fucking like constant human versus human bullshit you know um let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna allow that what was i I think the lesson here is commit to the rules you set in place. Yeah, because otherwise, I feel like it just doesn't make sense and people don't always want to watch it, right? Mind you, if you're just looking for a mindless show, you're just going to watch anything, right? But why go for The Walking Dead when you could go for The Last of Us now? Or any of these other shows? I mean, I don't know. I think there's a lot of questions with it all. Exactly the right question, Kayla. The problem is always how far the audience is willing to go versus how far the creators try to push it. And I don't know, to be honest, like, I just don't, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand most of it. Um, look, at Fast and Furious, the suspension and belief doesn't exist anymore in that series. Yeah, because they do the same shit. Also, I've never seen Fast and the Furious, so don't cancel me, but... Uh, basically, when they do more inconsistent stuff or major plot holes, they're blanking on the audience or banking on the audience enjoying it enough to not care. If they fail on entertainment, you notice the problems more. Yeah, and maybe like, so mind you, I think a lot of the reason why I notice these things so much is because I am becoming a writer and I am a writer and I want to become a published author. These are the things I have to notice because it's a lot more noticeable in the books than anything else right in the books you're gonna notice 10 times the uh the amount of shit you'll notice in a movie right because in a movie or a tv show you have all the flashing pictures you have the lights the sounds everything but when you have a book you just have the words on the page and if you're inconsistent with that the reader's gonna fucking jump off the book real quick readers are gonna not want to finish your book they're not going to want to finish it. They're not going to want to read it. None of that. If you're inconsistent and you don't actually play along with your own rules. And I think that's where I come in with all this criticism is it doesn't make sense. In a writer's perspective, to have a good storyline that makes sense, you cannot have inconsistency like that. You need to have rules and you need to follow them. Unless breaking the rules has to do with the story itself, you know? uh let's watch the barbie movie again then my tree hell no i won't watch barbie it's too much fucking pink bullshit for me <laughs> fast and the furious marathon and discord win i would probably watch maybe the first couple but i don't know after that you ain't missing out on anything in fast and the furious i feel like watching the first couple makes sense to do but the rest True, but if you try to apply book rules to TV slash movies, it also doesn't quite fit. And that's very true, right? 
there's certain things you have to do in books that you can't do in movies and TV shows. Absolutely right. But when it comes to, again, plot, if the writing's poorly done, it's going to be noticed majority of the time. Depends, okay? Depends, right? Like, there's certain things, like with Harry Potter, the books and the movies, very- they had their differences, okay? They had some different factors and different things they had to deal with, right? But it still kept with pretty much the same rules, despite a couple plot holes here and there, okay? It stick with the same rules. And when you come up with a TV show, right? With a TV show, a lot of it, I think, I think, ultimately, chat, what happened with the writing with The Walking Dead was because they, they still wanted to make a bunch of money, they just were reusing the same plot from before, because it, it kind of is the same shit, to be honest. I find it easy to spot plot holes in a movie or TV show, I feel like I can be nitpicky, but in some ways, maybe that's a good thing. Thank you for the fall, rookie. Hello, hello, welcome in, welcome in. Maybe that's a good thing when detecting good and bad writing. And I, like, I agree with that. Mind you, again, let me, let me put this as, like, a disclaimer, okay? Most people are watching TV shows and movies to kind of, like, most people are watching these things for mind-numbing things, right? For mind-numbing, just for something to play, for explosions, whatnot right right but when it comes to like and that's again what most people think i watch it because i want to know the story that's why i watch a lot of things other than horror horror i just watch it because it's fun and i guess that's more where like i don't know you can still get a good story out of horror movies though if you really pay attention and inspiration yeah but like walking dead is something i could not watch again all the way through to be honest like it it doesn't make sense because to me it's just like most especially nowadays most shit is not interesting most tv shows most movies they really don't have good story or good movie like it's just not good my personal opinion that's just how it is nowadays i mean doctor who is a giant plot hole of a tv show but i enjoy i've never seen doctor who no, okay, that's a lie. I've seen the first couple of episodes, but it didn't really entertain me. Not gonna lie. Harry Potter got massive plot holes. I guess. I don't know. I haven't read the books fully, but from what I have gathered, it's not as crazy as some other series, to be honest. I think the one that did it best, in my opinion, I think The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings were actually pretty good at staying on track for the most part in just a sense of like staying to their own rules like in a sense of J.R.R. Tolkien laid it out completely so that the rules were there the rules of his world this is what I mean chat the rules of the world I'm not talking about the rules of writing I'm not talking about the rules of tv movies whatever I'm talking about the rules of the creator's world he laid it out so that you could follow it, okay? Even if you change little bits here and there of the movies or whatever, you could follow the rules of the world. Like the magic, the the fighting, the the um, the species of Middle Earth. They had rules to each of them. They all had their flaws, their um their strengths, they all had their, like, what happens with magic, they all had something, right? They had the rules a part of it. He laid it out so well, because of how much work he did with it all, it made it so that the movies, in my opinion, both The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit were really well constructed. And not everyone's gonna agree with that, because not everyone is willing to watch, like, 18 hours worth of movies. Um... But I feel like it's definitely one of the better ones I've witnessed, where I've read the books and it's, even though they're missing bits and pieces of, um, like, bits and pieces of some of the story that Tolkien had in his books, it made sense to keep them out for the movie because in the book it just wouldn't make sense in the movie. But I don't consider that necessary a plot hole if it wasn't necessary. Is this making sense to everyone? Is this making sense? 
watch Talk to Me. I've never heard of that movie. Um, you can watch Doctor Who episode called Blink, fully standalone, very jump scary. Is it the one with the the angels, with this angel statues where if you look away, or like blink, like they'll move or like try to kill you or something? I think I've heard of that one. I think I have. Now, at the end of the day, like again, yes, Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit are perfect examples. Someone who's deep in the books could pick holes in the movies, but they trade consistency for entertaining movie. I think I think we're kind of on the same page, but in a different way. What I'm saying is there's not really it's not much plot holes. It's missing information. Maybe that is, um, whatchamacallit? Oh, thanks for the lurk smiles. And maybe, maybe it's the same thing. Plot holes, missing information, whatever. But it's, it's not necessary to keep those in. And I guess, you know, that to get the main story. And maybe, whatever, whatever, okay? But at the end of the day, The Walking Dead, the consistency doesn't make sense. Even, even in the fucking human war thing, even in the, I think there are actual plot holes in Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit movies, but I'm not an expert enough in the books to know them. The only plot holes is just, they just took out certain scenes because the movies were too long, I feel like, and they really weren't necessary. Like, there's a character in The Hobbit, I forget his name, but he, they, they meet him along their travels, the, the company meets him along their travels, and in the movies he just doesn't exist and i think that's okay because to be honest he really wasn't necessary <laughs> it really didn't need to happen and it wasn't adding a whole lot to the story itself right whereas again with the walking dead all i am saying is that i feel like they actually could have done a lot more and made it actually more entertaining with gradually evolving the zombies this is what I'm getting to, okay? And not having as many plot holes. Because, okay, think about it, right? Yeah, Tom Bomb- Yeah, yeah, Bombadil. That's who I'm talking about. Greed's it's skip for time, yeah. And I, I really don't think it's too much of a, like, an issue if you don't have them in there, you know? I don't think it's a big deal. Because it's not affecting the story, really, completely. It's not. Like- you still get a lot of lore and a lot of good story that was in the books that were in, you know, that. Didn't make a whole lot of sense in the books, neither. Exactly. You see? This is what I'm saying. Like, they're just keeping out the unnecessary things. It doesn't create plot holes because the plot is still moving along without him, you know? That's what I'm more talking about. But again, with The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead is the one I have the biggest issue with. Think about it this way, okay? What would be more interesting to watch, okay? Wars, wars between human, uh, between groups of humans, right? That had no, basically, zombie involvement. The, the zombies were basically dumb and stupid, and you only had people versus people, and that was it? Or, you add into that big people versus people fight, you add in, like, changing zombies zombies that are becoming smarter and are able to understand like climbing breaking things that like they've been doing in inconsistently right had they gradually added that like added on to those things throughout this series i feel like it would have been a lot more entertaining like you still have the guns you still have the crazy explosions the death whatever right and the battle between people but wouldn't it be more interesting to have it where you you have that on and then you have zombies that are like smarter too? I feel like the writers missed out on a lot. This is where I'm getting to. This is my whole point. Is the writers missed out on a lot? How do you feel if they introduced an explanation for zombies getting dumber over time? But see, I would want that. I need an explanation for that, but the thing is, if they're sitting here saying they're getting dumber over time, then why did they all of a sudden get smarter towards the end of each of the series? Because they did. Towards the end of- like, this is, again, the points I made in the first one, yeah. That's what doesn't make sense to me. If they were like- if they were consistent with the zombies becoming dumber and they stuck with that, I would not have 
a problem. Yeah, pick a direction. This is what I'm saying. Like, because in, again, the first couple of seasons, he had, okay, there's two ways they could have done it, okay? And they just needed to pick that direction. If they started off the season where the zombies were really smart, right? They were pretty, you know, on top of it, whatever. But as they deteriorated, as they decomposed, the brain just, you know, decomposed with them and they became dumber. And because the zombies weren't as much a, th a threat, that's when the people really became the biggest issue. And you stuck with that through the entire show. Okay, cool, you know? But if you're going to take the, okay, they're smart and like you're, you got to pick where to put it and you're going to put it at the end, show it gradually. Don't go, oh, they're going to be smart here, not here, here, here. Thank you for the hydrate, by the way. Cryptic, thank you. And thank you for the follow, uh, Big Bala. Hello. What are you talking about? Zombie shows? Yeah, The Walking Dead and how like inconsistent changing of the zombies or like making them smarter or making them dumber actually i feel like hurts the show because again i think it would be really freaking cool if you had it where the zombies like if you're gonna use the whole like they're getting smarter tactic think of how cool that would be in a like in the middle of a war like you could almost use zombie warfare think of how fucking cool that would been well, I haven't watched it since 2012. Sheesh, I'm put in the loop. It's okay, you really didn't miss much. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Other than they just came out with like two new shows. Um, which I feel like is why they should have gone like the gradual, like the gradual changing, the gradual evolution part, right? Is especially because they got, um, especially because they have new oh my gosh, new shows, if they had done the gradual, like, smarter, the gradual, like, whatever, I feel like that makes more sense, especially since they're expanding the shows again. That makes sense. And I think because they realized that The Walking Dead itself was coming to an end and they didn't want to stop because it's big money, big money, basically, that's when they decided to start making the zombies seem smarter, is because of that, you know? That'd be sick, though, what you say, and thank you. I, um, you should write those stories, Caleb. Well, I am actually working on a zombie, um, a zombie apocalypse book. After the current one I'm writing, um, I'm going to be writing one about my version of the zombie apocalypse with a twist, and I can't mention it because it's, I don't think it's ever been done in a zombie apocalypse situation, and I think it would be really cool to kind of, uh, go this route with it. But that is something I would talk about, like zombie warfare and stuff, especially the later you get into the apocalypse. Like, I would bring that in of like, okay, groups are now using huge zombie warfare, you know? Especially if the zombies are evolving or they stay the same kind of smart, you know? You have my attention. I got you. I'll let you guys know when it's released. It hasn't, um, I've written, I haven't written too much on it yet. How far have we gotten with it? Not that far. Can you guys hear the rain? Maybe not. You watched Z Nation? It was a good series. I did. I don't think I finished it. I don't think I finished it, but I do remember it. Yeah. Hi, Cereal. Oh my gosh, it's been so long. How are you? It's been a hot minute. Is it this one? No. Oh my gosh, I haven't. Oh, here it is. How have you been? Okay. I've written like two pages in uh, in this book so far. So far, we're getting there. I wish they added more in, said they cut it too soon. I don't, there's a lot of shows that like, I feel like they cut way too soon, you know? I do. Oh my God. I'm back from a four week vacation. Oh, how was it? How was your vacay? How was the vacay? Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know, and it's, I think the biggest issue with zombie apocalypse shows is the same idea is overdone. Like, the same, I feel like almost, for the most part, the more generic ideas and rules of zombie apocalypse have just been overdone. And that's why they had to go for constant, like, just 
lack of good writing in some of them. Like, I don't know, I think from what I've seen from The Last of Us, The Last of Us was pretty good with story-wise in the games and stuff. Haven't played them yet. The, um, what other ones? Um, Z Nation, not Z Nation. World War Z was really good. Yeah, it's all cash grabs. And I guess, like, I might be a rare person in the wild, right? I'm the kind of person that I prefer good writing. I like good story. I'm not here for the cash grabs. And I think, I don't know, like, that's just how I've always been. Like, I care more about the actual story than you trying to up the game and whatever because you got the biggest actors or whatever. Like, no. I gen like genuinely just want a good good story, you know? I don't know. That's how I write, is I'm not doing this for big monies. Like, do I hope that my books, when they get published, become big? Yeah, absolutely. But I'm not gonna sit here and write the generic bullshit for everyone. Especially when the generic bullshit really isn't working anymore. And I feel like the only reason most people kind of go in with the generic bullshit is because they, um, that's all, that's all they have, you know? Oh, by the way, we don't do cussing in the, in the chat. Big, we don't do a lot of cussing. Just a heads up. Um, it was great, just jet lagged AF was awake for like 40 hours yesterday holy shit hopefully you can get your uh get some sleep no you're okay i'm gonna allow one of your messages though because i do want to read this um but dirty minds <laughs> oh goodness what should we call it uh yeah definitely get some sleep j cereal make sure to get lots of rest uh, do you go to back back to work soon or are you already back what's going on uh hi red hood hello hello where was I? And for real, they all seem the same. It's hard to make a good zombie story without the same thing. Like, you know, you almost need, like, nuclear zombies or some shit. Well, and, like, I think the big thing, too, uh, Bobbing, thank you for the follow, come in, come in. Um, I think the way to do it, the way to do it is if you have a sto- you want to write a zombie apocalypse story, right? Which is something I've always wanted to do is my own take on the zombie apocalypse. If you're going to do the zombie apocalypse, if you're going to write it out, you need to do it the right way. If you're going to, you, you can use generic rules, okay? The generic, like, kind of shoot them in the brain to kill them off. You have to, like, whatever, right? You need different takes on it, okay? I think that's something Z Nation kind of made really well done, was they made fun of the generic zombie shit by going crazy with it. That's something I liked about Z Nation. If anyone's interested in watching Z Nation, it's a funny zombie apocalypse show. It's it's not, like, supposed to be serious. It's supposed to be stupid funny, and it is. It's good. Like, but if you're gonna go for those, find a way to do it better. Like, my, my motto with everything is if you're, if you want to do something and somebody's already done it, find a way to change it and do it better. Obviously without copyright or plagiarism, but you know what I mean, right? Um, but yes, hi Redwood. Hello, hello. What's up? Uh, we are fire chuck or kill us, say sugar honey iced tea. Oh yeah, I say sugar honey iced tea a lot. It means, you know, shit. No, I had taken five weeks vacation in total and was on the road in Australia, New Zealand for four weeks, so I have some time left to chill. Oh, hell yeah. Well, good. This way you get some time off still and just get to relax. Hell yeah, I'm excited. Z Nation was my favorite. Loved it. They need more. Yeah, me and my mom, so it's funny, my mom hates zombie apocalypse shows. She hates them. Z Nation, we started watching together and she thought it was the funniest thing. She loved that one. That was the one she loved to watch. Um, but yeah, me and... Yeah, it was good. It's really good. You really need to watch it, guys. Uh, I was awake for so long because of the flights. It's fine now. I went from 10 degree in Melbourne to 35 in Germany. He is killing me. Oh shit, I bet. Damn. Well, hopefully you can get some rest, even with the heat. Um, and hopefully it's not too crazy hot the rest of the time. Is it supposed to be cooling down for you soon? I like when the old guy smoked weed with a zombie. <laughs> yeah. See, it's like, it's different and it's funny. But, 
I, I kind of like that it mocked the general idea of zombie apocalypse now, you know? But that's, that's something that I'm like, that's what my aim is for mine personally, is to not make fun of it, right? But in, okay, 3 a.m. is officially past my bedtime. Happy time zones all and thanks for the fun chat. Thanks for joining in, Randy, and having a good conversation and for hanging out. Um, we'll, we'll see you hopefully next time I stream. I'll be streaming on Tuesday. Um, so we'll see you then, okay? I'll see you later, Randy. Um, yeah, with the one I'm doing, I'm definitely going to be going more into the biology standpoint. Because I, I took a lot of... I enjoy biology class. I, I enjoy biology. And I'm going to go into details about why the zombies haven't fully decomposed, right? Because bodies usually decompose really fast. The biggest question I've always had in zombie apocalypse is, is why are the zombies not decomposing, right? They look decomposed. Why are they not decomposing faster? Why are their organs not, like, how are they functioning when they don't have certain organs? Why are they eating, like, certain things, right? How are they functioning, especially if they're not eating enough to, like, replace the calories they're using that's burned? Like, there's so many questions. And I'm not gonna go into a whole, like, biological standpoint of like, ah oh, yes, the cells and the zombies use the calories from the human. Like, no, I'm not gonna go into that. But I'm gonna better, I feel, explain how, like, how like, oh, scientists kind of used, like realized that they were preserving themselves in a self-made mucus from the virus. Like things like that that would preserve like, certain things that should have decomposed like the brain right the zombie still needs a brain the virus infected the brain but they still need it to function and move and all that stuff that's why when you get rid of the brain the rest of the body doesn't work so like that's what i'm more thinking of is how do you preserve the zombies to make them good zombies you know like they should be down to bone eventually you're dead you know i get you yeah, yeah, they, they'll be like skeletons. So, you have great ideas, thank you. Um, I want to go through and like look at every single zombie in every video, or like look at zombies in most video games, look at most, um, most zombies in video games, and like good popular TV shows. I want to go through those and like, I guess rate the zombies if you will. Oh, but there is- okay, wait, let me see if I can find it. Oh, this one was three years back. I want to watch this one, okay. We're gonna watch... Because now you got me on the whole zombie thing, and I am curious. So apparently... They explained it? The Walking Dead creator reveals zombie virus origin. I kind of want to see this. Y'all down? I feel like this would be a good one to watch. Was there other ones? Oh, no, it was this one. It was this one. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, we'll see that one, and then we'll watch this one. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll watch both. Creator. We'll watch both. Because the other one was the one that I saw, and I wanted to show everyone. Because it was something that I, like, remembered. And I was like, oh, shit, you're right. These things don't make fucking sense. Okay, um, let me know if it gets too loud or if it's too quiet. Robert Kirkman is finally ready to talk about what caused the fictional zombie pandemic in The Walking Dead. For fans who have been following the story of The Walking Dead since Rick Grimes first awoke from his coma back in 2003, this revelation also, is a okay, long, long time coming. Real quick, real quick, right? Perfect on the auto, hell yeah. Um, one thing I would like to just add as like a, okay, this doesn't make sense. There is no way, all right? I know that most people would probably be trying to leave the, the city, right? But I feel like there'd be some people that were stupid enough to be like using this road. Also, during a, uh, during a emergency where there's a zombie outbreak, I'm pretty like almost 100% sure both of these roads would have been used. You cannot tell me that only one of the roads would have been used. I'm pretty sure in the midst of chaos, okay, they would have been using this road. There's no, there's no rules of driving if there's a zombie apocalypse. Like, I, I'm sorry, I would not be the one that's like, oh, I'm gonna get pulled over. Like, I, 
I'm out running the police then. Like, in this situation, come on. Or on the dirt or grass. Yeah, or literally on the train tracks. Like, okay, no, there are cars in the grass over here, right? So, why... Why didn't they use the other Times side? First awoke from his coma back in 2003. This revelation is a long what? time coming. It's actually what? impressive that Kirkman has kept his cards so close to his vest for so long, considering the franchise has expanded to infect every. Okay. Also, the whole thing about like, oh, keeping the card close to your chest. How do we really know that he just didn't actually have the origin of the zombie apocalypse? Like, he didn't know what it was, and so he was just waiting until an idea came to his head. Every quadrant of our media world. Video games, books, TV, you name it. I don't know, it's now, just something I think about. Now having reached the epic conclusion of his long-running tale, at least in comic form, Kirkman must have decided it was finally time to dole out a little fan service. Early on in the comic series, it's revealed that every human in the world is already infected with the zombie pathogen. While zombie bites accelerate the transformation, any death eventually results in zombification. We've seen survivors navigate every facet of this deadly scenario without any understanding of the zombie horde's origins. Well, wonder no more. On Twitter, Kirkman finally confirmed that the cause of okay. this- Okay, on Twitter of all things, I'm sorry, I have to keep pausing, but like, Twitter, really? Why can't you just make a whole pandemic statement, not just Twitter? In nature. Huh? You say extra- Aliens. Specifically, the zombie virus came from a space spore, in Kirkman's own words. Kirkman has long credited the work of late horror movie director George A. Romero. Came from space. Came from space. Chat. I thought, I'm not gonna lie, for the longest time, I thought that in The Walking Dead, the way that the zombie apocalypse started was because of a, uh, whatchamacallit, I thought, this is such a lame way to describe it, no, literally, like, my whole thing was I made it, um, oh, there goes my thing, I thought that it was, I legit thought that the way that they did the apocalypse or like it started was because of like military, right? This would have made so much more sense is if they were using it as like a biochemical fucking warfare. Like, I talked about this in the other one too of like, okay, what would make most sense is like military. They want super soldiers, right? So they're trying to test it on dead soldiers so that they can or dead bodies to see how they could bring them back to life or make them invincible in some ways right that and goes wrong exactly and it becomes an airborne virus or something and maybe they use a certain virus that already exists as like the base because it infects more whatever right i think failed experiment is so much cooler yeah instead of fucking what was it space debris space Base spore? What the fuck? No, this is lazy writing. This is fucking lazy writing. You cannot tell me that is not lazy words. writing. Kirkman has long credited the work of late horror movie director George A. Romero as a key inspiration for The Walking Dead. He said on numerous occasions that his entire magnum opus resulted from the question, what if a zombie movie just kept going? In light of this, the space spore explanation may be yet another homage to Romero, particularly his iconic zombie flick, Night of the Living Dead, wherein the zombie they got lazy apocalypse they made has lots of money. Exactly. instigated exactly. by exactly. You don't You don't have to come up with good ideas if you make a bunch of money, right? It's like superpowers where they come up with some excuse. Nano machine sun. Like, yeah, I don't know. I think it was poor writing. I love The Walking Dead. I'm sorry, Step Crow, we're ruining The Walking Dead tonight but like space you couldn't okay it would have been cool if instead like if you want to go down this route fine whatever okay why couldn't you have done like i don't know like there was a meteor strike that happened and that's how the virus infected everyone or like you had a virus oh here you go you had a virus that was frozen in the fucking glaciers and because of the global warming and everything the um whatchamacallit, because of all of that stuff, you, like, the virus was eventually, like, melted out of the glaciers, became airborne, and infected everyone. 
easy fucking money. Come on. Or an airborne pathogen, or you take any fucking virus that exists and you just mutate it. Aviation released easy. from the space probe to Venus. That's the space vehicle which orbited Venus and then pur was purposely destroyed by NASA when scientists discovered it was carrying a mysterious um, high-level radiation. Fans weren't sure they'd ever get a straight answer from Kirkman as to what started the I zombie know, virus I want to know dead. how many fans are pissed off over this, on because Tumblr, I feel like it is. dismissed the notion of revealing the source of the zombie contagion as irrelevant to the story, saying- Okay, okay, I'm just saying. Real quick, real quick. Any writer, I feel, this is my opinion- my opinion any writer or story developer whatever you want to call it if you use the thing of like i don't think it's relevant to the story i, I don't think that it uh, i think it's irrelevant i don't i don't think it makes sense to really have to worry about it it's it's because you don't know you don't know how it started all right that that's legit what it is i swear I'll say, okay, I'll say 95% of the time, all right? And sure, in some cases, yeah, it really doesn't matter, but also, like, you're gonna sit here and say it's irrelevant and say it doesn't matter and then come up with this shit? Okay. Maybe years after okay. it's all over, I'll just casually mention it in an interview. That seems like a very JK Rowling thing to do. Shots fired. Fortunately for curious fans, it seems like Kirkman found his inner Rowling. To be fair, this room may not seem like everyone who's watching this again. Human surviving yeah. against impossible odds has much to do with extraterrestrials, but the alien explanation has always been bubbling around the edges of The Walking Dead. When Kirkman and his creative team originally pitched the idea to Image Comics, Kirkman had to concoct an outlandish backstory for the series just to catch executives' attention. At that time, he told a substantial white lie that the zombie pandemic in The Walking Dead was designed by aliens who intended to use the zombie apocalypse to make Earth a softer target for invasion. Although Kirkman was pretty clear- That would have been a fucking killer story! What? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That white lie would have been a sick ass fucking story. Could you imagine you have zombie apocalypse and fucking aliens? Think of how cool that could be. No, that would have been an actual sick ass story. And you just threw it away? What? He just got lazy with the writing or he didn't want to ruin it for fans. And keep them on the line. Keep fans on the line, you know? Yeah, yeah. This is what happens when some company with a big bag comes in and the authors pump out good stories in months instead of actually making them good throughout years of writing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're absolutely right. This would have been a... You could have turned this so around if you actually had aliens in it and that's what started this. That would be the coolest fucking thing. That could have been the coolest fucking thing. Come that this on. This was never really his team's intention. It wasn't the last mention of ETs in the Walking Dead history. While not necessarily canon, a bonus ending for issue number 75 was inspired by this misleading pitch. In this sci-fi reskin, a lightsaber wielding Michonne explains that hostile aliens unleashed the zombie horde to turn humanity into a race of slaves bound into service by harvesting water, which their alien overlords use as currency. How's that for an hmm. alternate ending? Aside from the explanation of the virus, <sighs> this would have been the coolest, like, I don't know, I feel like it could have actually worked out as a cool story if you actually went with it. These lies could have been actually a cool story if you did it fucking right. The lack of a cure is definitely organic to Kirkman's original vision. The Walking Dead has never been a series about finding a miraculous cure. It's a story about <sighs> survivors re-establishing a new normal in a world that will never be the same. Is that the new Kylie Cosmetics on your face? Premise. Oh my god. But hey, at least I mean, if you make no money and have to ruin a good story of yours to survive, but damn, when you're already set for life, why would you keep making garbage? How can you be so satisfied with that as a writer? Yeah, like, The Walking Dead show took off really well for the first couple of seasons, right? If they had done it where, like, in my opinion, right, if they had changed it where instead of, um, 
how do I say this? If they had changed things up, right, and made it into, they could have changed it into the original ideas. They actually could have done this stuff, and they decided not to. Know what started even the after the money the they first had. Place. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Okay. Where's the other one? Oh, I can just forward. Years, here we go. Seasons, the Dead is set to okay, so this is this year, hello. The end of there we go. This is uh, 10 things that still don't make sense in The Walking Dead. I've watched, I think I watched it or I watched some of it, um, but I wanted to watch this here too because it pisses me the fuck off. Messy, but era of big budget TV. Set in a world overrun by the Can you turn this up yeah, a bit? Yes. I know, he just talks a little quiet. Is that better? Or up more? ...has been slightly marred throughout its run, as this video will explore, by some frustrating plot holes and unanswered questions that have left audiences baffled for years now. With that in mind then, I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and this is The Walking Dead... Good thing this is just the intro. ...don't make sense. <laughs> it's just the intro, so... How did Rick survive his gunshot and coma? This... As the hold up, Dead hold up, end, hold up, hold up. This has been the biggest fucking question of all time how the fuck did rick survive explain that shit to me let's go back to the beginning and ask how on earth did rick grimes survive his gunshot wound and his subsequent coma in the show's pilot days gone by rick is shot through the stomach and then falls into a coma which he stays in until just after the dead have risen and the world has already ended but considering the severity of his injuries and the fact that no one was there to help him recover after the apocalypse how did he eventually wake up seemingly entirely healed yeah also how long was he in the coma for should we look at that? Hold on, I'm gonna research this. How long was he in the coma? Bro was in a coma for three months, no feeding tube and shit. Yeah, how is he not, like, dead? Like, hold on. Um, how long was Rick in coma after the outbreak? About a month later, Rick came out of his coma and found himself alone. Okay, Rick wakes up at day 59 after the initial outbreak. Oh, no, okay, wait, wait, wait. There's there's a theory here. I'm looking at the Walking Dead wiki. Um, yet again, Gail from the webisodes was seen as the same ho seen at the same hospital Rick was in, also stating it's been a few months. This can prove that she took care of Rick while he was in the coma, and the reason he didn't turn into a walker was because the coma protected him from becoming infected by any outside bacteria. So, it looks like he might have had someone taking care of him, supposedly, okay, supposedly, this Gale lady. But I don't know how, because that's on the fandom wiki. So I don't know how accurate that is, okay? I wish I could just dump this story and make a good series with the Telltale story. Actually, though, I wish they didn't end the, but the infection is airborne and Rick's still breathing, right? So that's, well, I think they meant like infected as like he didn't turn into a zombie. I think that's more what they meant. I don't think they meant like infected, like everyone's infected. I think they just meant it more of, like, he didn't become a zombie. Yeah. Still doesn't make sense. Let's see what, what the... Uh, what the guy has to say though. Rick's gunshot wound is never really mentioned again, and the flashback sequences revealing that Shane did half-heartedly secure his hospital room when the world ended don't Can really explain how he wasn't executed by gun-happy soldiers or devoured by hungry walkers. Was auction, there are plenty was of characters who survived time. unlikely injuries no, in this show, it probably and this wasn't. will not be Rick's last appearance on this list, but this is one of The Walking Dead's more implausible and lazily written instances of plot armor. Number nine, why did it take the survivors so long to find the prison? Oh, yeah. The show's season two finale has some major cliffhangers, including the death of Shane Walsh, the reveal oh, yeah, that everyone alert. is infected with the virus that raises the dead, and the tease that the survivors are on the precipice of discovering a new sanctuary. The prison ends up being a major setting for seasons three and four, and the first real home for the group, but it takes a comically long time for anyone to actually find the place. The season two finale, as I mentioned, makes... Yeah, the also, the okay, question. When he you know have a scar from the gunshot that's a good point there too i don't think we really see uh rick like shirtless much though do we i don't know um one thing wouldn't they know where the prison is especially rick who's a cop i 
I'm just saying, shouldn't have Rick maybe have known where the prison was being a cop? I have, mind you, I'm not a cop that you know about. No, I'm just kidding. Um, don't he got keys? I don't think he would have keys to the prison. I'm pretty sure it would only be the prison guard, guards. Um, but could have lost memory. Could have, yeah. Maybe, maybe there's some issues, maybe. But he never had it. He never had any brain damage, so I don't think so. I don't think the coma would have caused him to lose his memory. If there, mind you, I'm not a medical expert, okay. But I don't think street cops and prison cops are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, ZQ. Hi, by the way. Would would a city cop right? Shouldn't most cops know like generally where the prison is? You think? I'll let ZQ answer while we watch Though the it's rest. Right around the corner, but when season three kicks off, months have passed, and there's still no. Not course. really, to be honest. City cops will take them to jail, and for there, there are others that take the inmates. But yeah, I guess that makes sense. Okay. The two arriving. There are some references to large walker hordes blocking their paths, keeping them at bay, but the fact that they're on the road for what appears to be several months based on Laurie's advanced pregnancy and circling the same area, it is kind of hard to believe that they hadn't found the prison, or at least a sign that it lay on the horizon. I mean, look, it number eight, awesome. how exactly did the military get overrun? The oh, yeah, true. Is set in a world where the apocalypse is already in full swing by the time we get to it. Oh, well, hell yeah, welcome episode. in then. The dead have risen, society as we know it has fallen, and all that remains are random groups of survivors struggling to make it day to day. Whilst the decision to skip over the specifics does make for an admittedly gripping creative decision in the early years of the show, the inclusion of large settlements with minimal security and the continued survival of the core gang does bring up an interest. If he was in a coma for two months, these car slash vehicles would be more rusty. Well, unless they're more recent, though. Right? Because I don't... It takes a while for, I think, the outbreak to be crazy, crazy, you know? Those didn't look recent. Fair? I don't know. You have to make a good point, though, Chefy. Query. That being, how did the army get overrun? The but walking yeah, this is a good question. How did the military get overrun? Because... It doesn't it really does make sense. We dig into this very briefly, but not nearly enough to exp This is another thing that doesn't make sense to me, right? How is it that a bunch of random people? How is it that all of these normal people have been able to survive, but the military hasn't? Explore how one of the largest and most again, again, in my opinion, stating this, I feel like it's lazy writing. Lazy writing, or be, you just couldn't come up with an answer of how they would get overrun, and you just went with it. Powerful military powers in the world was beaten by the undead so swiftly. And yeah, it is only a minor gripe in the grand scheme of things. Military the said F this thing is easy to overlook from a story. Why can't you just, like, grenade? Like, towards the back of them? Because it looked like a pretty big horde. Why couldn't you start off with a grenade in the back? They would have gone towards the sound, and then you could have done another one farther out. Get overrun, I don't understand. Trust me, I don't either. And when you know the military slash US government, like, drop a nuke to just end everyone's suffering? Uh, I feel like a lot of countries would have. But it is one of those things that, the but more I think you it think depends. about it, the harder it is to believe. Number six, how did Rick survive you know? the bridge explosion? Quite simply, there is a strong chance yeah, that- Yeah, I, I posted the first version of this um, on my YouTube. You should go follow that. Um, and we, we got into the discussion again, so now I'm going on a whole other rant about it all. Grimes so, is just fun. immortal. He's been shot, stabbed, shot some more, beaten to a bloody pulp, and tortured so many times it's hard to keep up. But surviving his final episode is definitely the craziest tale of his survival. After being yeah. impaled on a metal pipe and bleeding out to the point of... How did he survive that? Question. How did he survive that? I realized it mooted after. How did he survive? How did that not miss, like, a major organ? That's what I call plot armor, chat. Like, what? It had to have the walking dead. We're talking about, we were talking about all apocalypses earlier, but I remember watching part of this a while back, and I wanted to bring this up, but yeah. Like, it, okay, very least, like, it could have hit, like, right very much on the side. That's somewhat survivable. Look where it's located. Hold on, hold on. No. 
I don't know how I believe this. Let's look. The craziest tale of his survival. He could After survive. After being impaled on a metal pipe. That definitely had to have, like, at least... Just a kidney shot. Just a kidney shot. How did you also, like, not bleed out from that? Couldn't... Wouldn't internal bleeding be an issue, too? And Couldn't that have been an issue? Collapse, Rick's farewell finds him Looks like an intention shot. That's what I'm saying. It's like he could have like been internally bleeding, especially if it got an organ, right? I've seen so much fan edits on Rick. He's the main character, I guess. No, face -face he literally is the main character. Aboard, he leads away from hope. A confrontation that forces him to blow up a bridge to destroy them and save his family and friends. It's a brilliant send-off and should, even by The Walking Dead's logic, have killed him. But the yeah. episode's final scene reveals that he's actually alive and, if not well, on the road to being well. He's badly wounded, yes, but he's breathing. How are oxygen tanks still a thing? Despite the enormity of but, the bridge explosion but, and the severity uh, of his blood loss, I everyone the game back home no, I do too. assumes I do he's too. dead, and honestly, he should be. Even for this question, question, question: How long do oxygen tanks last? Can somebody look this up for me? There would be a limit. Yeah, there would be limited. But can someone look up how long they last? Do they last a long time? Because mind you, this is like probably ten years later. Over ten years later. Only way Rick survived it, I believe, is. Shrapnel? One and a half to eight hours of being made? Series, this or level of injury was just too much for one man to overcome. Number five, is Walker blood deadly or not? Five hours, eight what minutes, legit. Shit. <laughs> so what they have in the, it's just for decoration chat. It's a placebo effect. Use time. Oh, like how long it lasts to use? No, no, I mean like how, like does it expire? 10 to 15 years. Okay. All right. That one's a little more believable. Okay. I, it would definitely be really rare to find those, though. Thank you, guys. Thank you the for doing the research. The biggest plot holes of The Walking Dead concerns the walkers themselves, more specifically their blood. In Season 8, Negan orders his soldiers to use walker guts to infect oh, their no, enemies. Good. According to the enigmatic dictator, the undead's insides will come. I mean, they could always be refilled if you somehow manage that. Yeah, how would you do that? That's a whole nother question. Like, if you're using five hours of use, yeah, you're gonna run out real quick. All people to real die quick. in turn, even if they're nicked with a knife or arrow. It's an interesting theory, but it's actually kind of impossible given how the rest of the show has depicted Walker guts. So when you think about it for more than a second, Negan's theory just doesn't pan out. Throughout the show, the survivors have covered themselves in Walker guts to evade large hordes, and no one has got sick yet. Likewise, many- With this one, I have a question, okay? So, is Walker blood deadly or not? Right. That's a good question, right? In the scenes, because he's talking about how the characters covered themselves in bloods and guts and stuff, but it doesn't look like it ever got in their mouth most of the time. It doesn't look like it got in their, in, like, wounds. So, that, if we're talking that way, like, yeah, they shouldn't have gotten sick. But if they get it in their wounds or in their mouths, and that's, they should definitely be getting sick. Like, yeah. It says liquid auction lasts to 8 to 10 days. What in the plot armor is this? Do I don't even know. The characters have been cut know. or used tainted weaponry without any adverse effects. The season 8 guts trick is a hard one to overlook then given the show's past, and one that continues to baffle since it's only been deadly in the one episode the writers wanted it to be. And yeah, I understand that the same story happened in the comics, but the rules there were way more consistent about this stuff. It kind of yeah. just seems like the writers wanted to adapt the comic story without caring about how it lined up with what else they had previously established. This is what I was talking about earlier. Legit. Any blood that crosses the wrong blood with an open wound, you risk of being dead. Yeah. Infection, dead, all the above. Sure. Well, if you don't consume it or get in wounds, blood should be fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's why I was like, okay, what he's saying about the whole, like, using it as cover to, like, get past the walkers. That doesn't mean anything, okay? But when it comes to wounding and all that stuff, should mean something. But I just don't think the writers did it correctly. Oh, number four, how strong are the walkers Ooh, really? This is but I feel like strength would have eventually deteriorated, especially like their muscles, all of that stuff. It would be gone after being infected for a while because you're not using it, right? Because when you're not using that muscle, you lose the muscle. 
So as zombies, like, yeah, they're probably going to have a lot of muscle in their legs, right? But their arms and everything? No. If they would have have I'm Legend or the World War Z zombies, they would have been dead in, like, four minutes. Oh, literally. Okay, my goal... So I'm going to, like, after watching this... I'm sorry, I have it. It's okay. Uh, I'm After watching this, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch I Am Legend and rewatch World War Z and compare those zombies to this one because I, I want to do this now. It's a simple case of writing to suit what needs to happen, but it's hard to overlook once you notice it. Number three, how much time has passed? Oh, this is another like good the question. the cause of the disease that raises the dead, a the Walking Dead timeline has long been shrouded in mystery, making it almost impossible to figure out how much time has passed and how old everyone is. Going into the final episode based on Judith's age and how long Rick has been confirmed missing, about 13 years have passed since the pilot. Okay, but before 13, these indicators, it was years. much harder to decipher how The Walking Dead's timeline worked. Carl Grimes, for instance, seems to age about 10 years between his first and last appearances. Despite Despite a newborn Judith barely aging beside him, and most theories based on dialogue and subtle mm. time skips, indicates that the first eight seasons transpire over no more than two years, which is just the the only thing you can't really judge this part. Like it's hard because actors grow up. If you're using child actors, it's almost like you have to be fast with it because they grow up, and the amount of time like it that passes between recording and the seasons and stuff you have to be fast with that otherwise the actors do grow up and so i feel like when it comes to this one about how much time has passed carl's age really like carl's appearance really shouldn't have been a uh what should we call it i don't i don't think in any like plot and storylines in any show i don't think if, if all of the other characters have not aged and only one looks like they've aged most likely, the time really hasn't changed. It's just the actor. It's insane given how much happens in that time. The series still works without time being a major influence, but the more you think about it, the more baffling it becomes. Number two, where are the survivors getting their fuel? Oh, that's a Considering good question. the aforementioned timeline, there's another question that has never been sufficient. We talked about answered. this one, I feel like. That being, too. how do the survivors still have fuel for their vehicles? Despite what The Walking Dead will tell you, fuel does go off after a certain period of time, <laughs> especially if stored incorrectly, meaning that it can't be used. The show has glossed over this, though, to an almost hilarious degree at this point, with the Daryl's question. bike in particular. And, like, okay. I, I. Also, here's another question. Not only with the fuel, but, like, what happens if, like, transmissions go out? What happens if, like, if you're out of oil? Where are they getting the oil? Chat. Oh. Antifreeze. Oil. Like. These are legit questions. Also, on top of that as well, with, um, how I not get ripped off the bike or something. Yeah, exactly. How the tires didn't go flat. I'm sure they had some episodes, uh, but still. The benefits of the world's unexplained fuel supply. What they now do there is a chance that up? some of the survivors managed Guess to nothing, store right? some gasoline in the very early days of the apocalypse. But now that we're over a decade in, the use of cars and motorbikes to get around is just kind of confusing. They kind of explain this in the show by having characters adopt horses more than vehicles, but that was much, much later. Now, sure, the show has its behind the scenes reasons for this as well. I mean, the infamous indestructible because not all vehicles take same oil and parts well yeah like none of the none of them take you know anything tesla's laughing in the corner see but tesla wasn't in any of the any of the shows tesla technically probably didn't exist in the walking dead right but yeah if you have a tesla though and you can charge that thing with a generator or if, ooh, if you have solar power if you have so solar panels and are able you you could tesla you're chilling right you would chill Tesla wouldn't survive IRL, not with the batteries, but it would last a little bit. But if you had, I feel like, maybe, I'm not an expert. I feel like, though, if you did have, like, um solar panels i think it could work Productible hyundai tuscon was always used because hyundai was a sponsor but that, well, that isn't a major comfort when you see the gang using a petrol station without any issue number one seriously how many the battery walkers ten are years. There? even 13 or so years but you'd have it for 10 years of the apocalypse, huh? See? If you, okay, no. If you had a Tesla, alright? Theoretically, you could at least have it for a little bit, right? 
videos into the zombie apocalypse. Kind of depends. That isn't exactly Tesla's going the to way to go. Immune dead department. What with a yeah. population of over yeah. 300 million, that is fair. But even so, it is hard to get over just how many hordes and hidden walkers the survivors have come across. We're over 100 episodes into the show, and our favorite characters have destroyed groups of thousands of Cleo's walkers. Car grid collapses. Well, that's why I think wouldn't solar panels be good? Well, Mustang, true. As I'm saying, is like solar panels would be good because then you wouldn't have to worry about gas, um, gas powered generators or any of that stuff, right? Or do solar panels not work without something? Six thirty-two. <laughs> Jk. Okay, but. I don't know. But still seem to find I'm new curious. flesh eaters in pretty much every room they enter, regardless you need of how more much wind time power. Is passed oh, and how many wind turbines. Out. This also Stuff begs like the that. question: How are the walkers still moving around? The numbers don't seem to be dwindling, but the food supply certainly is. And yet, there's still innumerable undead lurking to give the survivors a hard time. Now, it's also That's important to note that question. we know that walkers decay, and as such, a lot of the ones we see also seem far too fresh, given the human population that we know about. As the series nears its end, then it might be time to start making a point of exploring the longevity of the walkers themselves, since it seems like they're being produced from thin air at this point. Again, this was another thing that the comics they haven't also touched babies. upon, especially as the walkers were affected by seasons, but we haven't really touched that in the show. So that's our list. Huh. That is the list, chat. That is the list. Um, If you guys want to watch more of this, guys, this is what culture? 